you see, this question is exactly the same as the previous question we just did, except that now it's less than zero. So you see, it's the same example. Just now we're dealing with greater than or equal to zero. Now we're dealing with uh, less than zero. So that means we're just looking at the exact opposite of the graph. Okay, so I have pre-drew the graph for you. This is exact, this exact graph I just draw. Okay, so now we're looking at less than zero. So which part of the graph is less than zero? Well, first off, we need to know if the zeros are included in the endpoints. So over here, we're looking at less than zero. Okay, less than zero, that means it cannot equal to zero. If it cannot equal to zero, what should we do? We should put in something called an open circle, remember? We put an open circle on the endpoints to tell ourselves that these endpoints are not included. Okay, so now we can move on. Which part of the graph is less than zero? So less than zero, that means everything that's under our um, uh, x-axis. So where are the points? Well, this region will work. This region will work. And this region will work. So again, we have one, two, three, three regions. Okay, now write them out one by one. We have x, it's less than negative five. We write less than because it cannot equal to. Remember, it cannot equal to the endpoints. So negative five is not included. That's why we have less than, right? Next region, we have this region over here. This region is in between negative two and three. So we have negative two and three. All right, and last region, we have three and four. Three and four. So you see, that's how easy it is. Sketch your graph, look at the graph, find out the feasible region, and then write them down. That's all you have to do. It's really, really simple, right, if you solve it graphically. So again, just as I said, if the question does not tell you whether to solve it graphically or algebraically, always go for graphs. So much easier.